Now that brings us to the next topic and that is cycles. Now, we have a thermodynamic cycle. By thermodynamic cycle, we mean what we have defined in our basic introduction. A cycle is nothing but a process in which the initial state is a final state. So, any process which can be represented even crudely as a closed loop on a state space, that is a cycle. And a cycle requires just one state of equilibrium, just to assert that state 1 is state 2. Okay, two states which are not in equilibrium we can't say that they are the same because we don't know enough about every state okay. so a simplest depiction on a cycle on any diagram pv or ts the minimal depiction will be some state from there start off and come back to that state you need not worry what happens in between but for our purpose most of our cycles will be depicted using some quasi static processes. So, we will have any number of points of equilibrium in between. Actual cycles may not be like this, because a non isentropic turbine, we will say that look, we need to know only inlet and exit states, what happens in between, we do not really care. But this is about thermodynamic cycles. And now, on one side, we have thermodynamic cycles. On the other side, we have actual plant, which is made up of pieces of equipment. And we have in between technical cycles. Technical cycles are thermodynamic cycles as implemented in a plant. So, now we have cycles from thermodynamics. We have cycles, technical, considered for implementation, and we have plant, that is actual equipment. And when we now talk of cycles and classify them, we are actually in this domain. When we do cycle analysis, we use the ideas of thermodynamic cycles, but now what we mean are the cycles, which are technical cycles, which are executed in equipment, which is part of a plant. So, when it comes to classification, there are a number of modes of classification. One type of classification is based on usage. First one is whether it is a power cycle or power plant or a refrigeration cycle, which is or a refrigeration. Thermodynamically, these are power producing cycles, these are power consuming cycles. For these cycles, W dot would be greater than 0, for these cycles, W dot would be less than 0. You can say these are normal or forward cycles, quite often these are known as reverse cycles. Now, sometimes the same cycle can be used. For example, a Stirling cycle can be used for power plant. And Stirling cycle, when implemented in the other way, can be used as a refrigeration cycle. In fact, Stirling cycle, more implementations would be as refrigeration, refrigeration, heat pumping, Carnot's or cryogenic cycle. We will be using refrigeration meaning all three, refrigerators, heat pumps and cryogenic. So, in one case, you say Stirling power cycle. 
the other case you can say Stirling refrigeration cycle or the reversed Stirling cycle. But you generally do not see, people do not say that liquid nitrogen plus based on the reverse Stirling cycle because moment you say liquid nitrogen plant, it is known that it is a reverse Stirling cycle. And anyway, there are not many power plant implications of Stirling cycle anyway. But uh, Brayton cycle generally used in gas turbines and jet engines. You can use a reverse Brayton cycle for refrigeration, reasonably common for aircraft cabins and many other simple implementation. And if the um, pressure for greenhouse gases becomes extreme, then um, Brayton cycle because it can use ambient air will become a rather attractive option. Only thing is it is not as thermodynamically uh, efficient as is a vapor compression cycle for example. Okay. So, the reverse Brayton cycle is so common that we have the name Joule cycle for it. Otherwise, it is nothing but basically a reverse Brayton cycle. So, that is based on usage. The second classification is mainly for power plants. For power plants, traditionally the energy which is supplied comes from combustion of a fuel. And when this happens, we have a classification when combustion of a fuel is involved of what is known as an internal combustion or external combustion. And naturally, because combustion may be involved for only for power plants, no combustion in refrigeration cycles. This is only for power plants and that to certain type of power plants. For example, a solar power plant, no combustion is involved. So, there is no point in calling it internal combustion or external combustion. Okay. In internal combustion, the process of combustion is within working fluid. So, no heat transfer process is involved. This happens in our car. We put in fuel, air is sucked in, the combustion takes place within the engine. So, that is an internal combustion plant and the cycle is implemented as an internal combustion cycle car or a jet engine, all these are internal combustion. In external combustion, combustion in a fluid, then there is a process of heat transfer to the working fluid of the cycle. So, there is a process of heat transfer involved. So, for example, our steam power plant, you have a boiler, a separate furnace, there are coils of water which absorb heat and um, uh, become steam. Combustion does not place, take place within the water or within the confinements of steam. So, that is an external combustion plant. It should be noted that because of this heat transfer to the working fluid, because of the heat absorption, there is no change in composition of the working fluid. Here, there will be a change in composition. it is going to power plant. First one was based on classification on usage, second one was based on the type of combustion, 
the third one we look at is the type of equipment used. And for this we have a single equipment plant and we have See, although we have shown on a TS diagram just some cycles, in actual practice the particular cycle is implemented as reasonably distinct processes, some at constant pressure, some at reasonably constant entropy, some at constant volume and all that. In a single equipment cycle, all processes in the same piece of equipment. Our car engine is a typical example. The same cylinder piston arrangement does the job of everything, sucking in the fluid, compressing it, burning it, expanding it, throwing it out, everything. Whereas, a multi equipment plant is different equipment for different processes. And fluid flows from one to the other. So, such cycles can be shown as block diagrams, one piece of equipment, second, third, fourth and fluid goes. One could be pump, one could be boiler, one could be turbine, what could be condenser. So, our power plants, household refrigerators, these are, you know, household refrigerator is a typical example of a multi equipment plant. You have the evaporator, you have the condenser, you have the compressor, three pieces of equipment very easily seen by everyone, except that condenser these days is integrated with the body. So, it is not so easily seen, but um, simple models of refrigerators still have a proper black painted condenser coil. The capillary tube is hidden somewhere. So, unless you really hunt it out, you cannot hunt it out. Your air conditioner, multi equipment. Then a closed cycle or an open cycle. A cycle is said to be closed when the working fluid is sort of sealed in and except for leakage which have to be taken care of, there is no interaction of the fluid directly with the environment, nothing comes out, nothing goes in. So, one typical example is our household refrigerator, air conditioners, steam power plants. All these are closed cycles. Okay. An open cycle, on the other hand, is the working fluid is taken in known as intake or induction or inflow and the working fluid is then thrown out. And that means that at least one process is left to nature to work out.
illustration i c engines all over car engines jet engines air breathing engines as they say you take in air you take in fuel you throw out the exhaust let nature worry about what to do with that naturally internal combustion cycles will have to be open cycles because you are changing the characteristic of the working fluid you can't go on using it again and again so you have to throw it out and let nature worry about how to give you fresh air out of the exhaust okay cloth cycle steam power plant but that doesn't mean all steam power plants are cloth cycle our steam locomotive is an illustration of an open cycle steam power plant it takes in water you have to continuously feed it water that is why electric engines have essentially an infinitely long range diesel engines have a much longer range because diesel is a very compact fuel steam engines have a much shorter range because periodically you have to supply coal which is a huge bulk and also water because water is a working fluid and the locomotive does not have a condenser it throws out the steam which comes out of the engine part those will also be open cycles even partial recovery will make it open because to work the cycle you have to keep on feeding the working fluid at some end and the there the recovery is not there because perhaps it's not economical or technically easy to recover or maybe it gets contaminated but if it doesn't get contaminated goes only through heat exchangers maybe you can recover it in which case it will be safe those cycles and finally the fifth classification is the type of working flow giving you a gas cycle or a vapor cycle. unlike the second classification external combustion internal combustion see the first is applicable to power plant refrigerators that makes a classification out of then this internal combustion external combustion is applicable only to power plants whereas type of equipment single equipment multi equipment is applicable to both power plants as well as refrigerator and cloth cycle open cycle applicable to both power plants as well as refrigerator similarly gas cycle and vapor cycle is applicable to both power plants and refrigerator okay in a gas cycle the working fluid is a gas no change of phase is involved of any kind here the working fluid is typically in two states liquid and vapor and hence condensation and evaporation or boiling are essential part of the operation of the cycle whereas no change of phase is involved here now from a student point of view there is an advantage here for example in this case the gas in a simple situation can be assumed to be an ideal gas with constant cpcv in which case we have simple equations to worry about and it is possible to do what we call quite often a standard analysis assuming the working fluid to be an ideal gas and you get neat expressions for efficiency at some function of p1 p2 or t1 t2 simple expression just substitute them in a calculator within half a minute you have the answer for efficiency and many other parameters whereas 
here because the vapor is involved and condensation evaporation is involved, there is no simple equation of state. Whether it is water for power plants or any refrigerator for any refrigerant for refrigeration plant. So, every case will have to be worked out. So, we have a formula for the efficiency of a standard auto cycle, formula for the efficiency of the standard Breton cycle, but we do not have the formula for the efficiency of a standard ranking cycle or the COP of a standard uh, vapor compression cycle of any kind. So, no simple EOS, so we have to work out each case. See, when you teach cycles in thermodynamics, one should realize that cycles are one major link between thermodynamics and further engineering. And hence, when you come to cycles, you must spend time in explaining what a cycle is and the different classifications of cycles. Show them at this time pictures of various equipment and their cycles, so that their interest immediately let them realize that the thermodynamics, one of the direct implementations is in analyzing power plants and refrigerators and the link is through thermodynamic cycles. So, Coming back to this, thermodynamic cycles, technical cycles which are implemented in plant, there is a link between these two. We will analyze thermodynamic cycle, they are implemented as technical cycles in appropriate plant. And you will notice that some classifications pertain to these cycles as well as these cycles. Some classification pertain only to these cycles and the plant. For example, when it comes to open cycle and closed cycle, it has nothing to do with thermodynamic cycle. Thermodynamics is let nature cool it, it is a constant pressure cooling process. But when it comes to actual implementation, there is no piece of equipment executing that cycle. Now, the next thing you do is talk about performance parameters. There are performance parameters which some provide you the goodness of the plant. These parameters are known as efficiencies or coefficient of performance for refrigerator. Then there are certain parameters which talk about compactness of a plant. These are usually some specific output or specific refrigeration effect. There are some parameters which talk of the size or the capacity. Here we talk about the power output. In case of refrigeration, we talk what is known as the tonnage. And then there are, these are the parameters which almost everybody will be talking about. But then there are other parameters which are of importance. Some of them may be economic, some of them will be purely thermodynamic. We will talk only about one of these. For example, other parameters directly or indirectly related to these are work ratio, in some cases mean effective pressure and so on. See, the size and capacity is essentially a scale. 
small plant or big plant. When it comes to real thermodynamics, size and capacity does not matter. We analyze a 1 megawatt steam plant and a 2000 megawatt steam plant using the same principle, same paper, same pencil. So, that is a minor parameter. We are going to look at the efficiency and the compactness and then we will look at the work ratio. Efficiency is invariably defined is for power plants or engines. And this is simply our schematic diagram would be we have an engine producing some output W dot, some some heat rejected. This would be the typical nomenclature rather than Q dot 1, Q dot 2. This would be the environment temperature T naught. This would be some supply temperature T sum. Efficiency will be defined as W dot net divided by Q dot supply. And naturally, higher the better. That is simply Q dot supply depends on how much fuel you have. Power output is what we want, fuel is what we pay for. Right? If you are a power plant engineer, any type of power plant, you will generate power and sell it. So, this is the revenue department okay? and this is the purchase department. You have to buy fuel. So, you should be able to generate more revenue with the least amount of fuel. So, higher is this ratio, better. Then when it comes to refrigeration and heat pumping plants, there is a coefficient of performance. And here, there is a small difference. A refrigerator plant will do the following. You have an environment T naught and you want a T refrigerated space to be maintained less than T naught. You cannot have perfect insulation. So, from the environment, there will be some energy leaking into it. In between, you will put some thing at room temperature and into it and say cool it or put water into it and freeze it. So, either to take care of this leak into it or to cool the temperature of or reduce the energy of the stuff which is put in it, we will have to extract heat out that heat which is extracted is known as the refrigeration effect. And naturally, our second law tells us that you just cannot throw it out at a temperature higher than or equal to environment. You cannot throw it at a temperature less than environment because you just cannot do it. You must be setting, sending it out to the environment and wherever you do, heat transfer must be possible. So, temperature must be above the environment at least by a small amount. And you cannot do this unless you provide a W dot, supply a W dot. This is the equipment known as the refrigerator. What you need is Q dot R. It is what you want. What you have to pay for is Q dot supply. Q dot R, if it is good, then your refrigerator will keep things very cold, produce lots of ice. If Q dot supply is bad, it will consume more energy, your electricity bill will go up. You want your room to become comfortable with your air conditioner, but your bill should not go up. So, this is the ratio that you are interested in. Coefficient of performance is what we want divided by what we pay for. It is a dimensionless ratio, but unlike efficiency, which the second law says should be 
less than or equal to 1. This can have a value less than 1 equal to 1 greater than 1. That is why it is called coefficient of performance. And out here, your w dot net is usually denoted in terms of megawatt, kilowatt, maybe gigawatt for big plants. Although this can be in compatible units to give you a ratio, quite often q dot r is measured in tons of refrigeration and the conversion factor is 1 ton of refrigeration 3.5 kilowatt. Tell them that this is an approximate number, historically the value may be slightly different, but for our purpose remember that 1 ton is about 3.5 kilowatt that is good enough. Let them read some book to find out the history, what it was meant initially by 1 ton of refrigeration. Do not tell them stories about that short turn and from 0 degrees C to 0 degrees C. Oh, Let them read something on their own, they will find it out on the internet anyway. W dot net is uh, measured in kilowatt and hence quite often COP may be written in terms of tons of refrigerator, refrigeration plus kilowatt. It is a dimensionless number, but now it has a unit. We talk of energy and efficiency of engine as 30 percent, 40 percent, but when it comes to an air conditioner, the supplier may say that look, it provides you 1 ton per kilowatt or a more efficient one will provide you maybe 1.2 ton per kilowatt. That means it provides you this much of refrigeration effect, consumes this much power. And there are other units, BTU per kilowatt hour or kilojoule per kilowatt hour, whatever. They are all dimensionless numbers, only units are different. So, do not ever insist that COP must be given to you as a pure number. It may have a unit associated with it, but the unit should be such that it should be a dimensionless unit. Okay. But if somebody asks you what is the COP, you should give him a pure number, meaning it is kilowatt per kilowatt or ton per ton. This is for refrigerators. When it comes to heat pump, it is the same reversed cycle which does pumping of heat. But here the job is to keep a space at a temperature T higher than T naught. And then you say that rather than directly heating up, the job of a heat pump is to take heat from the environment and supply the required amount. and run it as a essentially as a refrigerator. So, looking at it, it is a reversed cycle, takes it from a lower temperature, dumps it at a higher temperature. But here we are interested in the refrigeration effect, the amount of heat extracted from that low temperature system. Here we are interested in the amount of heat pumped and hence the COP here is defined in a slightly different way. Instead of q dot r by w dot supply, this is this is the definition of COP here, this is the definition of COP here. The denominator remains w dot supply, the numerator now is the amount of heat supply. And why do we need to supply this heat? Because there could be some heat losses to the surrounding, you cannot have perfect insulation or you may keep something there and expect it to be heated up by absorbing heat. So, this is the heat pumps load, heat pumping load not refrigeration effect. 
that divided by heat supplied is CO2. So, these are the three parameters and you must spend time in explaining them, the differences and similarities between the two, particularly the differences between the COP for a refrigerator and COP for a heat pump and take this opportunity to tell them what is a turn off refrigeration means, at least approximately. Then the something about compactness and size. See whatever plant we have, it has a working fluid. And whatever we do, the working fluid usually flows from one equipment to another. This could be a power plant, this could be a refrigeration plant, does not matter. M dot working fluid. Now, we may have a given capacity of the plant. For example, you take a power plant. It produces some W dot net and we can compare two plants, one from company A, another from company B, both producing 1000 megawatt, but they will be different differences. And one company will say that look for 1000 megawatt we need to circulate steam 800 kg per second. Another company says we need to circulate steam 900 kg per second. Both may have the same efficiency, but the fluid circulation rate is different. And hence we define a parameter which is known as there are two parameters defined. One is the specific output which is W dot net M dot working fluid and the other one is the reciprocal of it M dot working fluid divided by W dot net. The unit here will be kilowatt per kg per second or megawatt per kg per second or it could be kilo joule per kg. Here it would be the other way around kg per second per kilowatt or megawatt kg per kilo joule. This is known as specific output, this does not have a name, but in uh, steam plant this is known as the steam rate or specific steam rate. And what is the effect? If specific output is higher, that means for the same working fluid flow rate, I take more output from the plant. Or looking at the other way, for a given output, I need to circulate less amount of fluid. This fluid is not consumed, it is only circulated. But if you need less fluid to, less fluid to be circulated, that means you have smaller sizes of equipment, smaller duct, smaller duct sizes, smaller boiler sizes. And hence, something which has a smaller steam rate or a higher specific output will be a more compact plant. This has nothing to do with efficiency, this has something to do with compactness of the plant. Similarly, your refrigeration plant, once in a while something leaks out, okay. particularly from split air conditioners because these are not sealed systems. There are ducts, there are flanges, there are connectors. So, something leaks out and you have to fill in. Now, suppose you have two such split end air conditioners, both of 5 tons, but once you fill in, one requires more filling, one requires less filling. So, one with less filling is naturally more compact, works with less fluid, maybe circulates less fluid. So, this is something to do with compactness and size. And this is what the technical name should be specific output or steam rate 
or working fluid rate. Steam rate is a very common in steam power plant. So, going to our parameters, compactness, size capacity is a scale. So, we have come. Now, these are the parameters which we talk about and these are specific to certain type of engines. For example, work ratio can be applied to engines and is usually applied to engines, but usually is applied to, but can be applied to refrigerators also. You will find that many textbooks show an engine Q supplied, Q rejected, W net. Q dot supply W dot. This is a very simple schematic, but in many textbooks you will notice that it is shown like this, what is called a Sankey diagram. Q dot supply W dot net Q dot rejected. Is it really so? Is it like a highway, one lane going there and other lane going here? It is not so, because we know that to keep the plant working, there are certain internal exchanges which are not seen from outside. So, show them something like this. You show them that look, this network comes out, but this network come, comes out from a work which is flowing inside the system. So, something like this you show. Maybe I will do it on a bigger diagram on the next page. You say that look, this is the heat which is supplied. I will show it horizontally, I have a larger space. So, part of it is definitely rejected, no doubt. But it is not that the remaining becomes work. This becomes work, no doubt. If this is supplied, but during working, much more work is created and is recirculated within the system. So, there is a positive work flow in the system, there is a negative work flow which is fed back and network goes out. And you can show them this on a PV diagram and also on a TS diagram. For example, They generally have an idea of the Carnot cycle on a PV diagram and Carnot cycle on a TS diagram. So, show a Carnot like cycle on the PV diagram. These are the four processes. Let me say A, B, C. and show the whole thing on a TS diagram. On a TS diagram, the Carnot cycle would simply be a rectangle, A, B, C, D. Okay. You ask them, what is the area under the curve A, B or A, B, C on the TS diagram? What does it represent? Q dot supply or Q supply. What does this area represent? Heat rejected. So, this area represents 
W net, which is Q supplied minus Q rejected. So, the ratio of W net to Q supplied is the efficiency. Okay. And you can say the ratio of Q rejected to Q supplied is the say the heat transfer ratio and efficiency higher the better, heat transfer ratio lower the better because heat transfer ratio is nothing but 1 minus efficiency. Now, you ask them what is the area under the curve A, B, C, this area, work of expansion, right. What is the area under the curve C, D, A, work of compression, okay. What is this area in between? This is network A, B, C, D. This you say is work of expansion which I call W plus magnitude. This I call work of compression which I call W minus by magnitude. So, that W plus minus W minus is W net. But do we call W net by W plus as the efficiency? It is not the efficiency, right. In fact, W plus W minus have nothing to do with efficiency. But now consider two engines with different ratios W minus W plus. This what we call the work ratio. What is the significance? If there are two engines with a work ratio of 0 0.9 and another work ratio of 0 0.2, which one would you prefer? 0 0.2, why? O less overheads. That means, well, in either case, suppose I am supplying 100 kilojoules, my efficiency is 50 percent, I am taking out 50 kilojoules of work. But to take out 50 kilojoules of work internally, I may be doing 500 kilojoules of power than 0.5, I mean less than 0.5. Right. So, this work ratio is better and for us this is lower means better. This is usually not worried about in thermodynamics because this has nothing to do with thermodynamics. And this is useful because when we start discussing cycles, the first question which comes up is if Carnot cycle is the best, why not use Carnot cycle? It turns out, give them an example and it is there in the illustration, a Carnot cycle has one of the worst work ratios. And hence, we get attracted towards Stirling cycle, Erickson cycle, which are modifications of Carnot. Then there is another parameter which comes into operation and which is the mean effective pressure. This has something to do with reciprocating machines. either power plant kind or the refrigeration kind. We can give an illustration of a power plant. You say your car engine, everybody knows that your uh, car every student may not own, but I think every student or his or her family owns at least one two wheeler these days. Most probably all students have a two wheeler these days. And everybody talks of a 100 cc engine, 200 cc engine typically of in that range. What does this 100 and 200 mean? They say it is a displacement. It means that you have a cylinder piston arrangement in which if you take the piston from one extreme end to another extreme end, the amount of volume which is swept, which is displacement is that V, which you talk of. V displacement, V D. Technical name is a displacement volume. Okay. 
and then you say that one cycle of working would take the piston from one end to other end and back at least once. In some old uh, um, uh, engines, it could be completed in one back and forth. In most of the modern engines, it is implemented that you do it twice. Some cranky engineer in Kochi has implemented it by doing it thrice, six stroke engine. And I am sure there are other possibilities. Now, you say the work done per cycle and by this cycle I mean the technical cycle, not the thermodynamic cycle of just going back and forth. And at this uh, time tell them that this movement is known as a stroke and this movement is known as a stroke a stroke one way, the stroke another way. And if your thermodynamic cycle is completed within two strokes, it has, it does require an even number of strokes, right? You have to come back to the original state. Then you say that it is a two stroke cycle. If it is completed in four strokes, it is a four stroke cycle. During cycle analysis, rather than straight away go into diagrams and formula, it is worth spending a few hours explaining all this. This way you are making the life simpler for people who will teach them IC engines and steam turbines, provided they realize that the students already know this and just revise this quickly and go ahead. Otherwise, they will bore the students again. So, you determine the work done per cycle, let us call it let me say network done per cycle is WC. Okay. Now, if I assume because this is moving by PD, if I say that let me assume that this is done in one stroke of the piston, what should be the pressure that should be acting on that stroke? That pressure we call the mean effective pressure. the displacement volume or you may call it stroke volume. Sometimes this is also known as V s for stroke volume. For engines, the mean effective pressure would be the work done per cycle per unit stroke volume, because work per done per cycle is mean effective pressure multiplied by the stroke volume. At this stage, there is no need to split it into break mean effective pressure and indicated mean effective pressure. We are looking from a thermodynamic point of view. Okay. That we can come when it comes to IC engines. And similarly, you say for an engine, this will be the work done per cycle. So, multiply this by the number of cycles per second and you will get the power output of the engine. You can even set up a small problem based on that. For, for example, you tell them that our household refrigerator also has a compressor, it consumes power. So, work consumed per cycle if you calculate and divide it by the stroke volume, you will get the mean effective pressure for that compressor. For any reciprocating machine, you take a reciprocating compressor, you use that small pump for filling air into your football or basketball or even bicycle tire you can determine the mean effective pressure for that. How much is the work done per cycle divided by the stroke volume, which is a geometric feature. Find out the area of the piston, how much does the piston move from one end to the other, you have the stroke volume. You get the mean effective pressure. Once you do this, after this it is our routine formula, but tell them this. And the next more, next most important thing to tell them, I will put this if you want in the final version, is why not Carnot cycle. In fact, if you go through the uh, exercises, 
the first two exercises 8.1, 8.2, now I will call it C A 1 and C A 2 are essentially this, the characteristic of a Carnot cycle and its modifications the Stirling cycle, Stirling and Erickson cycles. In the Carnot cycle, I have uh, asked you to determine efficiency, all state points, of course, all state points come first, only then you calculate the efficiency. Oh, temperatures are given, so efficiency comes straight away. Work ratio, work done per cycle, mean heat supplied per cycle and mean effective pressure. For a Carnot cycle, you will notice that uh, although the volumetric compression ratio is 20, so the actual pressure will be 20 multiplied by 3, 60 bar, right, maximum pressure the work ratio is so near 1 that the mean effective pressure is pretty small. Mean effective pressure should be high because in a given volume you are doing more work. So, a higher mean effective pressure means a more compact machine, either a more compact engine or a more compact compressor. Tell them that, that is why did I write about mean effective pressure? Here it should be the higher the better. So, efficiency should be high, mean effective pressure if it is a reciprocating machine should be high, specific uh, output should be high or specific working fluid flow rate should be low, work ratio should be low, it should not be near 1. Okay. 